Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanasa here. So how to get your Merchant Center account for Google Ads approved in 2021. Now this is literally one of the biggest questions e-commerce store owners have, especially those which are starting to kind of dive into Google Ads and that is how do you even get your Merchant Center account approved? Most Shopify store owners are getting their accounts suspended one after the other and a lot of people don't even know how to really deal with that and then come out on the other end to start running ads via Google again. And one thing I want to kind of open up right from the beginning is that yes, it is 100% still possible to drop ship on Shopify and then get your Merchant Center account approved via Google Ads. But the main trick behind that is that you will have to do certain changes to your websites to how you basically run your entire business in order to really get approved for that Merchant Center account. But be sure to watch until the end because this video is one of the most important videos I have put out in the year of 2021. But let's get right into it. The first thing you'll have to do in order to find any type of success with this video is to destroy that like button down below until it turns blue. It'll take just two quick seconds and it'll really please the YouTube gods. Okay, hopefully you've done that. But let's find out exactly how to get your Merchant Center account approved. And this could be you just trying to start a brand new Merchant Center account or that you already have a Merchant Center account, which unfortunately got suspended. A lot of the things in this video, which I'll be going over, should increase your chances of getting that Merchant Center account approved. Now, this does not mean that 100% of the time your Merchant Center account will be approved. There are still certain things which still e-com store owners, including myself, haven't really figured out regarding these Merchant Center suspensions. And that's simply because Google is not really open with why the Merchant Center accounts are getting suspended. There's very general ideas. And after having gotten one of my own suspended accounts back, which I just recently made, I've kind of come up with a list of a few things which you should be doing. But before really diving into how to get that Merchant Center account unsuspended or basically get approved, you need to know why this is even happening. So why is exactly Google becoming more strict when it comes to running ads on their platform? There's several reasons which I've come to realize with the Google ads. The number one reason is that there was a Google employee who actually got scammed while shopping via the Google Ads platform or on one of those websites, possibly a drop shipping website, which uses Google Ads to run the ads. And because of that, Google kind of became more aware of what was going on with their platform. And as a result, they became more and more strict with the kind of rules that they put out. Because with these new rules, they now are going to have a much higher quality of advertisers using their platform, which is exactly what they want after this individual got scammed on the platform. So this also means that we as dropshippers are heavily impacted because of these new rules but definitely one of the main reasons why google has become more strict in addition to that a lot of the drop shipping stores which google has started to notice have long shipping times and by long shipping times it could be anywhere from seven days to 30 business days sometime even longer depending on which country the product gets shipped to and because of this what happens is that there's a reduced customer experience overall. In reality, nobody really likes waiting for their packages anymore because of inventions like Amazon and their Amazon Prime shipping. With that Amazon Prime shipping, a lot of the people, especially in the United States, have become more wanting of such a shipping experience on all of the websites that they shop on. And if they're not getting that experience, they overall have a very bad experience on that website. And what this leads to is less shoppers via Google because these people would rather then go on Amazon.com directly to shop. And that means Google does not make money in the end. You want to understand that in the end, their whole company is a business after all. And the main job of any business is to just make money. So if people really aren't shopping via Google ads that much because of this experience, then obviously Google is going to become more strict. And that's exactly what they've done. When they become more strict, they now have a higher quality of advertisers who actually are interested in providing good experience for their customers. And and that's exactly what Google wants in order to get more shoppers via their platform. But in addition, something that's very general that has also happened is that there is a higher interest overall amongst e com store owners who want to go on Google. This could be because of the rising costs with Facebook or other advertising platforms not really getting these people the results that they want. Because let's face it, Google is one of the biggest advertising platforms out there since most normal people go on Google and then search something up when they want to purchase a product. So this leads to a lot of other Shopify store owners gaining more interest with this platform and wanting to use it to advertise their products. But one more thing which has kind of become a final straw for Google and caused them to become more strict with their rules 
is the copycat stores. Now, if you just do a quick search for a random product on Google, it could be literally just about any product. You will be able to find a bunch of drop shippers, not only copying the images, but also the titles and the overall description. And this Google's algorithm has started to kind of put more emphasis on. And because of that, the, not only are these copycat stores getting down, but overall as an entire community, we are also getting affected. That means more Shopify stores or just drop shipping store lookalikes are bound to get suspended. But these these are some of the main reasons why Google has really become more strict. Now let's go on and talk about exactly what are the causes of suspensions because there's not just one cause when it comes to a suspension, there's multiple different things which could be causing these suspensions. And this list, I took a screenshot of directly from Google's website to show you guys. But some of these include user safety, return and refund policy, false representation, all the way down to adult oriented content and also gambling related content. So looking at this quick list, you'll be able to know exactly what the reasons are for you to get suspended from Google. Of course, there are some other things which could also cause these suspensions and Google every single day comes up with some types of new policies and some new regulations, which kind of add to this list but right now as of when i'm recording this video this is the general list of suspensions which you could be facing for your shopify store some of the most common suspensions include misrepresentation which falls under the false representation category or simply that your products do not align with google shopping ads policies there's a wide range of wording that google ads uses for these suspensions however the tips and tricks that i'm about to go over kind of provide a general idea of battling with these suspensions but let's start talking about some simple ways to deal with suspensions now again as i've already mentioned in the beginning of this video not every single suspension would always be resolved using these techniques these are just some techniques which i personally use for a recent store and google was able to actually approve that store and get it up and running for me and it is also a drop shipping store so there was nothing fancy that i did but these are the things that i personally did for that store but one thing you want to understand is that you don't really even need a lot of the things which i'm about to mention here because some account suspensions can easily be just fixed by following the guidelines under that policy now what do i mean by this exactly well there are some suspensions such as checkout incomplete or refund and return policy missing and similar suspensions like these which directly you know where the issue is and you can go in and fix that issue right away. These are the kind of suspensions which are extremely easy to deal with. The things I'm about to mention right now won't really be needed in this case. However, most of the people do not unfortunately have such simple fixes to their suspensions because Google again is, has more of a problem with the entire business model that dropshipping follows, which is shipping from China and with the long shipping time. So exactly what should you be doing and what should you be avoiding? The first thing you want to avoid when it comes to actually listing the products is to avoid branded products in total. Now, some of the things which I'm about to mention in this category were actually directly told to me by the Google Shopping Feed app. Now, this is the shopping app that I use to connect my Shopify store to the Google Merchant Center account. And this app is by Symprosis. But once I was suspended, what I decided to do is I decided to directly contact their team in order to figure out some solutions to the suspension and following their guidelines, I was able to get my account back and I have listed out exactly what they personally told me and what I personally did to get my account back in this case. But the first thing was that I had some products on my store which were actually branded products. So products you sell should not be available on other stores with brand names associated with them. Now, what do I mean by this exact? Sometimes if you list a product, for example, the blackhead remover on your website and then you go on AliExpress, you'll notice that there's actually a brand name in front of that. Or if you go on Google, there's actually brand names associated with that product right in front and that is simply called a branded product in google's eyes that is a product which you cannot sell on your shopify store unless you have some kind of documentation for it as drop shippers obviously we do not have any such things so in that case what we want to do is simply avoid selling that product as a whole but this is one main reason why my account was suspended because some of the products which i found on aliexpress actually had brand names associated with them i personally did not know that but the same process team who runs google, the google shopping feed app was able to tell me regarding that and the simple solution was just removing those branded products and going out and finding very very general products which do not really have any big brand names associated with them now of course all of the products have some kind of brand names associated with them your main job is to just find those general products which are not big ones like microwaves heaters air conditioners etc which people often associate brand names with to sell on your store because that is going to be one of the main reasons why your account gets suspended one thing you can actually try is if you have any 
random items within your home just take photos of them and then upload it to your shopify store and then submit your shopify store for approval so that once it gets approved then you can just remove those products this is also one thing i did with the shopify store i simply took products like clothing from my own home and put photos of that on the shopify store and then listed that product as a product that is for sale on my store and that actually worked even though it was a simple piece of clothing so that's one thing you definitely want to try but definitely stay 10 feet away from branded products the next thing you want to do is avoid any types of timers now personally i did recommend having a timer on the cart page but until you get your merchant center account unsuspended you want to make sure there's no kind of timer available anywhere on your shopify website this means no timers on the product page cart page checkout page etc you want to completely avoid that as a whole in 2021 and onwards if you want to get your account up and running but speaking of timers and just the overall shopify theme make sure to use a theme which is different from most general shopify dropshipping stores a lot of the people who dropship use the theme debut or brooklyn or something similar if you really want to have a better chance of getting your accounts unsuspended i highly recommend getting a paid theme or using one of those free themes which not a lot of shopify store owners actually use because again the main go-to theme for a lot of drop shippers is debut so you want to stay 10 feet away from that until you get your account unsuspended but make sure definitely to avoid any types of timers as this brings me to the next thing and this is one of the most important things which you can do in 2021 and onwards and that is setting up your policy pages correctly now there's various different policy pages you absolutely need to set up such as refund policy privacy policy terms of service all of them need to be set up and this does not mean just going on your shopify store and clicking the generate button to generate something because one thing a lot of shopify store owners don't know is that there's actually placeholders within those policy pages which shopify actually requires you to go in and edit to fit to your store and your market and here is a quick example on my screen of one of the placeholders which the symprosis support team actually pointed out so as you guys can see this was for the policy page pop-up which is available on the checkout there was a directly a placeholder available here in brackets and it says as you can see add contact information what shopify wants you to do is actually go in and personally add contact information and remove this entire text within brackets because whatever text you replace it with should be directly related to your shopify store and to your market and this is one thing a lot of shopify store owners don't even know about they just think that clicking the generate button is all they have to do and then publish the pages onto their shopify store that is far from the truth you want to actually go in and edit these placeholders this is one thing which i had done wrong and after the sim process team told me about this i went in and fixed it and this is also one of the reasons why i was able to get my account unsuspended again but definitely go into the policy pages make sure everything is correct and make sure everything is aligning with your target market but this brings me to the next point on the list and that is the actual checkout page now again another page that is commonly overlooked because most drop shippers think that it is enough to just choose some colors for it add the logo and then start running ads that is again far from the truth what you instead want to notice is this following image so this image again was directly taken from my shopify store which Simprosis went in and did a thorough check on but this was one of the problems on this shopify store for some reason so as you guys can see it says that there is no field available to enter the coupon code so we need to go in and add the coupon code section even though this is a very small problem this is also one of the reasons why shopify may suspend your account so you want to make sure to go over every single page on your checkout page and make sure everything is aligned properly that the checkout promo code section is available and also the pricing and shipping information is clearly visible because if this this information has any types of issues with it if there's no promo code box available here then that is going to lead to google ads again suspending your account so this is one problem which was on my shopify store that i didn't even know about until the sim process team pointed it out to me so make sure again to go step by step within your checkout page funnel all the way to the end and make sure everything is aligned properly but in addition to that when it comes to the shipping prices you want to make sure that there is a full match with your shipping prices oftentimes a lot of shopify store owners or drop shippers in general have one pricing on their shopify store and then they completely forget to set up the shipping options on the merchant center or they set it up but they set it up incorrectly so what you want to do is that you want to make sure that the shopify back end shipping is matching the shipping costs in the merchant center account and within the merchant center account you just need to have a base rate setup so what i mean by this is if you followed my shipping setup video that i 
put out many many months ago and you have multiple different shipping options available for added profits then you want to only set up the base rate so on my shopify store for example the base rate is that anything below 50 dollars costs the customer two dollars and 78 cents to ship and then anything above 50 dollars is free shipping so in the google merchant center account i went in and added just that base rate so anything below 50 dollars i added costs about two dollars and 78 cents to ship and then anything above is completely free shipping i did not go in and add any of the other rates that i offer simply because this is the base rate this is all google needs to know in order to unsuspend your account one thing a lot of people don't know is that google actually goes and crawls into your website and actually goes all the way to the checkout page before abandoning the cart. A lot of people complain that there is some John Smith trying to constantly check out on their Shopify store. And this John Smith is actually Google and its algorithm going onto your website and checking to see if all of the pages are done correctly. And if the shipping price is actually matched, because this is again, one of the most common reasons why a lot of Shopify dropshippers get their account suspended. But this brings me to the next point on the list. And that is the shipping info itself. Now with the shipping info, one thing you you want to understand is that Google ads in general has kind of become against the drop shipping model simply because of the delayed shipping times. And in order to battle this, what some drop shippers do is that they actually don't even provide the shipping times, which is again, one big mistake when it comes to drop shipping. Instead, what you want to do is not to source from AliExpress directly, especially those Chinese suppliers, but rather source from eBay or Amazon or AliExpress, but then choose the ships from United States option. Now I've made a video on this on my channel, which you can check out. If you're trying to know how to divert from sourcing these products, from AliExpress onto these US suppliers because this is one of the biggest game changers I've personally experienced. I simply stopped sourcing products from AliExpress because of these Chinese suppliers taking a long time to ship and I moved on to eBay, Amazon and also AliExpress but then using the ships from USA option because what this lets me do is that it lets me portray the real shipping times and in this case the real shipping times could be anywhere from 3 to 15 business days which is a much more convenient time period both for the customers and also for Google rather than putting something like 7 to 30 business days which is what I used to recommend because I used to source from China. So it's definitely important to have faster shipping times in 2021 and onwards but you can also drop ship while providing faster shipping time. This is exactly what I'm doing. I have less than 1% of the items from my store getting shipped from China itself. Most of the other products do directly get shipped from eBay, Amazon, and so forth. But definitely one of the biggest things which you need to focus on is the shipping times. Get that shipping time to lessen from seven to 30 businesses or so onto about three to 15 days or around that area, because that is going to be the biggest game changer in getting your Google Merchant Center account unsuspended. But this brings me to the final points on the list, and this is the actual collections. Now with the collections, you won't only want to have collections with actual products within them. A lot of Shopify store owners, what they like to do is they like to have multiple collections just to show potential customers that their store is not empty. However, this is really bad in Google's eyes because Google then goes into every single collection and it actually scans the entire page for products. If it does not sense that there are any products there, then that is going to be a big red flag in Google's eyes because that just lets Google know that you're not a real business or you're not a serious company. In order to avoid that, you want to only have certain collections where you can add products to. Of course, the more collections you have, the better, but whatever collection you have on your Shopify store, make sure that there is a minimum of two to three products with real description and real photos. You also don't want to copy any kinds of photos, don't copy any wording for the description from any other website because if it detects that you copied the description or the title or the images from any other website, that is going to be another red flag in Google's eyes and they may be less likely to unsuspend your account. So this is kind of the general things you have to do in order to get your account approved in 2021. Just keep a note that Google has again become kind of against dropshippers and you want to basically design your entire website to portray it as a real brand, which you should have always been doing from the beginning anyways, in order to really build that long term and sustainable business. But again, these were a few points which you should definitely be implementing on your Shopify store if you want to get your Google Merchant Center account unsuspended. But again, not everything from this list will always 100% help you get your account back. These are just certain things which personally helped me. But if you found any kind of value in this video, let me know down in the comment section if you do end up getting your Google Merchant Center account unsuspended or if you have any other questions regarding suspension. But I'll see you guys next time.